If uh, Jeff could come forward, we are going to interview this uh, uh, young man. It's more than a man than young. Now, we've usually, when we think of a story, we think of someone who has had a rough past and, uh, you know, this uh, a massive uh, conversion experience, uh, a, a, an incredible meeting with the Lord. But uh, Jeff most probably doesn't have, uh, like me, uh, an incredible story to tell because um, I know you grew up in a Christian home, did you? Yes. Yes. Uh, your mom, we interviewed Vivienne the other, the other day and uh, she told us when she was converted and uh, that you were a son and so you had the privilege of growing up in a Christian home. Tell us a little bit of, a, of your story. Well, um, most of my life I've grown up in a Christian home because I was... Um, until I was about five or six, that was when my mum was um, converted. And then she began to, uh, yeah, she became a Christian. And so uh, most of my life I grew up with Christian parents, which is just such a privilege. And um, as I look back now, I can see that where I should have been, I can look back now and I can see where God has brought me. And I can see that even before I knew God, uh, He was looking after me. Okay. I, yeah. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you've always known God, and you've always known that he's, uh, He loves you. Mm. So, um, but surely growing in a, in a, you know, being part of a church and a, in the Christian faith, being a Seventh-day Adventist, is not all rosy. Uh, did you always have a passion for Jesus? Did you always have a passion for God? No, it wasn't until about three years ago, because um, most of my life I grew up just um, a bit of a naughty kid, you know, like most kids, you know, and getting into trouble a lot and getting caned at school and stuff. And, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I, I grew up, went through primary school, went through high school, and, you know, you, you know, like, you kind of grow up knowing about God and you, you know the, the truth and the Bible and everything. But it, it's not until it becomes real to you, you know. That's when it becomes, like, when you know Jesus for yourself is when it becomes real. And um, that didn't happen until probably about three years ago. So. And what happened? How did you come to... To have a personal experience with Jesus. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I just started watching. Um, well, Mum got this this uh, Christian TV, and I started watching that a bit more. And um, I heard some powerful preaching, and I just felt convicted by it, and felt like you know, um, just seeing the love of God really as well. In that, um, and and knowing that He forgives all of my sins as well, that just kind of was taking a big burden away, and and then. It came to the decision I could be baptized, and I was willing to do that. And um, yeah, so I was baptized on my, on my 18th birthday on the 1st of January. And uh, yeah, and that was, that was a pretty special day. But it wasn't until about then that my walk really started. And um, that was when I really started to know God for myself. And yeah, so. Okay, so now you are, you are growing in your experience, as we all grow in our experience of uh, knowing God. But what does Jesus mean to you now? Yeah, He, um, he means everything, really, because I know that... Um, I know it's not, it's not until you, you experience God for yourself when, it, when you just know for certain that, it's, um, that you know you're on the right path. Because I left high school, and after I left high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do for my life. I had, I had six months, I did nothing. And then I was thinking, you know, I'm just going to commit. You can't, I kind of just started praying. I just commit my life to you. And so I kept, you know, I just kind of prayed that a lot. And, and then, um, then I found myself going to places I wouldn't have thought I would be going to because the Lord started teaching me. I had a burden to reach my friends. I wanted to share with them about the new things I was learning and about God and um, His great love for us and how you can really have a relationship with Him. It's just, it's real. It's not, you know, just something you hear about. And... Um, yeah, and so I found myself doing what they call Bible work in, um, in Melbourne with a, um, with a man there, a preacher and evangelist there, and that was a really good opportunity for me. And then I learned how to, how to do kind of Bible studies and how to share with my friends, and, and it's the best thing I've ever done. I don't, I don't look back now. And, Amen. Um, it's not until you look back and you see that the Lord's changed your life. You, you don't even have to try. You look back and then you realize God's changed your life. And, Amen, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, been, it's been beautiful to, to have Jesus in your heart yeah. and to have never maybe participated of all the heartaches and pains that other people have had to go through in order to meet Jesus, isn't it? Yeah. And I yeah. say the same thing because I have a very similar experience to yours. Yeah. So we are brothers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, um, Jeff. Our Father in heaven, 
Tonight, as we gather together around your feet, it's as if we are coming to your school and you are the great teacher. We are so glad, dear Lord, that during these meetings we have been able to discover that you are our Father and that you love us so deeply, so purely, Lord, that your love for us, dear Father, has no evil intentions. And Lord, we pray tonight that as we study the Scriptures, that your love once more will be so clearly shown to us, that our hearts will be broken, and our lives, Lord, will melt, and we will long to have a more intimate walk with you, Lord. Bless all of us as we study your word tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. I grew up, as I've told you a number of times, in the country of Chile. And in the main highway that connect, connected the capital city with the main port of Chile. And uh, I lived in a farm that was just before entering a tunnel. And it was on, an, uh, on a mountain. Chile is very mountainous. And so this, this road went up, really uphill. And, uh, you know, we live just next to that road. And on the 12th of December of every year in Chile, there's a very special uh, holiday. And it's called the holiday or the feast of the Virgin of Lovasquez. And it's very interesting to see what happens because uh, uh, there is this shrine very close to this uh, port uh, of Chile, the main port of Chile. There is this shrine where this virgin is worshipped by the people of Chile as a very miraculous virgin. And um, for days before the 12th of December, people walk hundreds of kilometers to be able to make it to this, to this shrine. And so what we did was uh, we used to put a, a booth, like a, a tent, next to the road, and we used to sell, sell them coffee and sandwiches and cakes. And, you know, you would see thousands of people walking, you know, by, you know, by the road. Probably in a, in, a, in a common 12th of December, there would be easily 100 to 200,000 people surrounding that, surrounding that, uh, that shrine. Well, one day we are, there was a man there that was carrying a little child on his back. And we asked him, why are you walking to Lovasquez? And he said, well, I'm asking God to heal my son. This son had a certain disease. And so we asked him, and why do you have to walk towards there? Why couldn't you just talk to God? And I said, oh, no, no, no. Because in the last kilometer of my walk, I walk on my knees and my elbows. And when I get to the shrine, I show the virgin my bleeding elbows and my bleeding knees. Some of the people, the last couple of hundred of meters, they do it on their back. They do all kinds of sacrifices to be able to show God that they have sacrificed and that they are worthy of the, of the favor they are asking God of. And, they, and of course, you, in the mentality of Chile, you do not approach God directly. You approach Him through the Virgin or through the saints. What a, what a horrible way of seeing God, isn't it? That you have to show Him your, your bleeding elbows or your bleeding knees in order for God to even consider your petitions. What a horrible way of saying God. I praise God that, that the God of the Bible is not like that. You know, the God of the Bible, the, uh, you know, the, uh, we are taught in the Scriptures that He's a loving God. He's like a father. And you can talk to Him directly. There is no need to show Him sacrifices and bleeding or, or pain. You know, in other countries, people stick needles through their bodies and they do all kinds of crazy things. They walk on, on fire uh, in order to be able to show that they have sacrificed themselves in order to obtain a favor from their gods or from God in the case of Christianity. But dear friends, God is not like that. In our series, we have learned that God loves you passionately and that He loves you with an everlasting love, doesn't He? Before you were born, God already loved you. And after you are gone, God will continue to love you. Isn't that beautiful? And dear friends, God loved you before you did anything for Him. And so it doesn't matter what you want to do for Him, God, that will not change the love of God for you. In the last couple of nights, we've been learning how 